Welcome to Stan the Energy Man. Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies here. Having a really exciting day today. It started off when Jay sent me an email. And it just so happens that Pacific Business News has uh, Hawaii ranked in the top 10 states in the United States for doing hydrogen work. And that was a great piece of news to open up to this morning uh, because we take a lot of pride in the effort that we put into putting Hawaii on the map with hydrogen. And it's also uh, beginning in December, which starts off uh, a lot of military activity over the next week as we commemorate the 75th year of the, the bombing of Pearl Harbor and Connery Marine Base and Schofield and a lot of the, and Wheeler uh, and a lot of the air stations around here. So make sure you uh, thank a vet and uh, look at the activities next week. Participate if you can. Hey, today we've got some two great guests, some folks that I've been working with for probably a year and a half, almost two years now. Um, I met them, first of all, by, uh, via the uh, Energy Accelerator Program uh, here in Hawaii. Um, they're not from Hawaii, but their company was selected by Energy Accelerator a while ago um, as a, one of the companies that, that they wanted to see develop and do things here in Hawaii. Um, and they were part of the Spiders Project with uh, PACOM and uh, the military. And so I got to meet them and talk to them. And because I'm doing uh, microgrid projects at Hickam, I figured it'd be good if we talked to them and to see what they could uh, lend to our program. So today we have uh, Lisa uh, Lofner and Darren Mormon from uh, Go Electric. And welcome to the show today. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thanks for the invite, Stan. Thanks for having us on, General. We, we really appreciate you coming out here and talking to us because your technology is a little bit different. And one of the things I told our electrical engineers is when we went into our microgrid, I know that the big companies, Siemens, Johnson Controls, Honeywell, they do big stuff all the time. I was looking for companies like yours that were a little more cutting edge, had something a little bit different, somebody that would, would fit our microgrid and help us to really stretch the envelope, as it were, and do some different things. So we figured your company was right in that lane, and that's why we're, we're looking at talking to you. Mm -hmm. But thanks for being here. I know you've been busy this week, and uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about some of that stuff. But first of all, Lisa, why don't we start with you? Sure. What got you into doing what you do with microgrids and, and the technology that you're into business doing now? Sure. Um, I'm an engineer by background. Um, don't do much engineering anymore. We've got great engineers on staff who do that. But I've got actually a startup background. I um, uh, spent about six years at Rolls-Royce spinning out companies. Uh, it was so much fun. I decided I needed to do that on my own. Uh, wanted to kind of move more into a renewable energy industry. Mm -hmm. I really have a strong passion for leaving the, the earth a greener place. And uh, in Indianapolis, which is where we're from, started poking around the entrepreneurial community to find uh, a couple of entrepreneurs that had a great technology that could help accelerate renewable energy adoption. And uh, our two engineers, Tony Sovereigns and Alex Creviston's name, just kept being brought up. So met with them, uh, loved what they had already had patented, figured out a way we could work that into a, a product that was not only great for microgrids, but also great for uninterruptible power from renewable energy. And we launched the company in 2011, and here we are. Wow. What about you, Darren? What got you into uh, the renewable energy world and what you're doing at Go Electric? Well, I've been with Go Electric only since May. Lisa quite recklessly installed me there as the <laughs> business development director, and I'm really very honored to have that role with Go Electric. And it's uh, given me an opportunity to continue my work that I've done in, uh, in renewable energy and in distributed generation since about 1999. I've worked for uh, companies such as uh, General Motors, Detroit Edison, uh, Caterpillar, and Power Solutions International. And so I've been involved in distributed generation for uh, since about 1999. Mm -hmm. I've done more than 75 distributed energy projects on five different continents. Uh, and I've never been more excited to go to work than I have been here with Go Electric because what we do, I think, is so important uh, not only for our environment, but also from a security standpoint. When you think about energy and how important it is to the safety and the health of, of our citizens of the whole planet, not just our country, but the whole planet, it really does give me that motivation to work that much harder to help support our, our really just truly brilliant people who brought this, uh, this revolutionary product to the market. Yeah, and I think we live in some pretty exciting times because and, and a lot of people are focused on climate change mm -hmm. and regardless of where you stand on the cause of climate change, the fact of the matter is we should be doing everything we can to be cleaner and greener right. anyway, mm -hmm. regardless of whether you think it's tied to climate right. change. 
and the technology and stuff is ramping up so fast. There's so many new technologies, new new batteries, new control systems, new, uh, I mean, even photovoltaics are getting better and better, mm -hmm. uh, more efficient, more mm -hmm. efficient. Transportation side, we have the hydrogen stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So you worked on a lot of projects, Darren, and obviously you too, Lisa, and, and um, it's just exciting, exciting times. So much is going on. So what are some of the things that Go Electric's involved in now, especially in Hawaii. What are some of the projects you're, you're looking sure. at working on? Well, we completed a large microgrid project with quite a few other partners at Camp Smith. This is the Spiders Phase 3 microgrid. It was a third of three phases and the most aggressive. So um, Spiders Phase 3's goals was to take the whole base off the grid. And Go Electric was um, a new technology company uh, invited for the Phase 3. We delivered two of our large uh, battery energy storage uh, slash microgrid control boxes and also delivered two large diesel generators. And that was a lot of fun, Stan, because Caterpillar was our supplier. So think about that, a small start of trying to figure out how to work with a large company when it's not the other way around. Yeah. But um, that system did an operational demonstration in um, January. All, all in all, our systems are controlling a three and a half megawatt microgrid providing uh, an interpretable power support to um, one of the barrack buildings, doing some peak shaving. So we're also doing energy efficiency as well as energy security and uh, working with some great partners on that project. So, uh, and important to Hawaii because it's gonna keep uh, Camp Smith secure regardless of what's going on uh, with the grid around it. And uh, just that's been a stepping stone now for us uh, doing some other projects that we're starting to plan uh, both here on Oahu and on the Big Island. Was, was that originally the spiders thing, the go, I mean the um, energy accelerator, was, was that tied together or was that something totally different? Uh, we actually met the energy accelerator mm -hmm. while we were, we had, had already been awarded the Camp Smith project. But um, what we wanted to do with Energy Accelerator was learn more how we could take what we had done from a military product perspective and then apply that to what would a utility or maybe a commercial and industrial customer wanted. And, and being from Indiana, it was really hard for us to try and figure out how, how can we get in front of Hawaiian Electric to kind of get their feedback on right. here's what we have, is it useful, we think it can really help with your renewable energy goals uh, to get to you know, 100% by 2045. And through the Energy Accelerator and their go-to-market cohort, we uh, did that project in 2015 and they were outstanding, uh, helping us get in front of Hawaiian Electric, learning what was important to them, where our technology fit. And uh, through that process, um, we have a much better understanding of how we can add value and really help a Hawaiian Electric both with renewable energy uh, uh, acceleration, adoption, and then also demand response. Great. Are there any other projects that you'd mentioned the Big Island? You're, you're looking at doing some work over there possibly? Uh, yeah, we're planning a microgrid project over on the Big Island and uh, we're working with another energy uh, accelerator cohort called Blue Pillar on doing a project up at uh, Marine Corps Base Hawaii. That as well, uh -huh. great, awesome. How about you, Darren? What are some of the projects you said you worked on several other countries, in fact, mm -hmm. prior to coming to, uh, to Go Electric. What are some of the projects you've worked on? Uh, uh, previously, I, I worked in advanced engine controls where we could take uh, uh, gases, could be anything from biogas to flare gases from oil production, and use that to make an ultra uh, low emissions uh, fuel uh, for a gaseous fired engine. Uh, did that for uh, several years, also worked for a cogeneration company, uh, working uh, in facilities that were uh, geared towards supporting the community through uh, municipal locations, uh, uh, fire and hospital uh, uh, facilities, things like that. So uh, I think it's been, uh, what, what's, what makes it more fun coming to work with Go Electric is that, is that it's a step further along in the technology and it's more of an enabler of what you said, the, the environmental uh, aspect of this, that I think all of us should be uh, better stewards of the planet and I think our technology enables that. It enables that uh, the, the better impl implementation and application of renewables but it also makes it more manageable from a utility standpoint so that they can manage that penetration of re renewables as they come online. Well, a, a lot of people, you know, in fact I've, I've even had state uh, legislators come up to me and go, oh this grid stability thing it's just a bunch of 
PR from the electric company, mm. but it really is a problem. And mm -hmm. you know, maybe you can help help the public understand a little bit of what the challenges are for a public utility like Hawaiian Electric when you start getting a lot of renewables on the grid. Because you guys design the equipment that helps make those adjustments and yeah. help right. adopt it. Right. What are some of the important things the public should know about HECO's challenges with uh, well, balancing I, I the think power? very simply, you know, the sun goes down at night and the wind stops blowing. And so with that, when you think about it, and clouds come overhead, and when that happens, there's the variability aspect to it. And the utility is responsible for making a good, stable, reliable grid infrastructure for everyone to use at all times. If there's, uh, if there's a problem on the grid that's brought on by uh, the, the variability aspect of uh, renewables, no one's going to blame the, the solar company or the wind right. company. They're going to blame the utility. So I do have uh, a, a, a lot of um, uh, empathy for the utility and their plight and what they're trying to do. And so what, what our system and what energy storage can do is it can pull that, re, that, those renewable energy resources, the energy from that, so that you can store it and use it at, when, it's, when it's most advantageous to the utility or the user. So economically you can make better use of it, but also it's, it's a more manageable source of energy for the utility so that they can make a, a, a good, solid, reliable source of energy. Okay, so you pretty well defined the panic factor on HECO's because they don't have control over those things. And they're a utility that's been in control of their generation and distribution. Mm -hmm. and So they've had complete control of that generation and getting it out there and the requirement to keep it smooth and stable and, and keep everybody covered without brownouts and, mm -hmm. and, and power outages. So that's their fear factor side. So what at least what does GO do to help them control and balance the, the intermittent with sure. what they produce already. Yeah, um, we can actually provide two things for them to help them control and, and balance out the intermittency from the renewables. So from a control perspective, um, uh, as our systems proliferate here um, uh, through a demand response program, Hawaiian Electric will be able to see what's, what's available to them in terms of battery energy storage and also in terms of distributed energy resources that could be brought online quickly. If you have a situation where the sun's starting to go down, people are coming home from work, turning on their air conditioner, so you now have a load and a generation mismatch. So through a DR program, you can actually call up those resources to help stabilize that mismatch and, and control it or, or ask for the control. Then the other thing we can do, because we automatically monitor what's going on with the grid health, uh, because our product also is what's called an uninterru uninterruptible power system. And what that is, uh, I'll use the example, battery, uh, batteries that a data center or a hospital will have in between the hospital loads and the generators. So if the grid goes out, the batteries carry the loads, start up the generator, so you have the smooth transition. So our systems are constantly monitoring the health of that and we can provide an export back to the grid to make sure that that load generation balance is always in sync. And, and one of the and, big challenges yeah. there would have to be the timing. It is a timing, but because we um, control real time, um, we actually can do any kind of power injection, power transfer, or even a load shed if that's what the grid needs. Subcycle, that's part of our patented technology. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and uh, get back to you in a few seconds. And we're going to take uh, about a minute. We'll be back with Go Electric. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful, way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for a likable science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power of Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians, or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Okay, well, five seconds. 
Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan the Energy Man here with Go Electric. And they're going to tell us a little bit more about how their system uh, can maybe help Hawaii a little bit as we start to pick up some new renewable sources. So we kind of cut you off there in the middle of uh, talking about controlling and some mm -hmm. of the other power sources. So when you have uh, an intermittent solar or wind arrangement, as Hawaii will obviously start picking up because we can't tap so much into geothermal like the Big Island can as readily. And Hawaii is going to have a lot of like residential solar. Mm -hmm. um, not sure how much more wind we're going to get, but those are all intermittent. You've got to have a way of storing that energy when it's excess and then being able to, like you say, dispatch it back into the system. So mm -hmm. what does your, your system do that, um, that helps us, can help Hawaiian Electric do that? Sure, so our, our system is basically a lithium ion battery. Uh, although we can connect because we have a microgrid control built right in, we can connect to a, a fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell, a flywheel, another battery system, a generator, and then any renewables too. So literally it will form a microgrid with all of those assets and then turn what most people think with renewables as kind of variable generation. Well, when you supplement that with battery energy storage, all of a sudden you have a, a really a firm generation source. So as the grid is starting to fluctuate as the sun comes down or if a cloud goes over, our box can supplement the generation needs of the grid to make sure that that load and generation is always in balance. And we do that uh, in, a, in a unique way that's just all together in one, in one box. And I think that's what, kind of what separates us okay. from other microgrid companies who either are more on the software and control side and rely on other folks to deliver the hardware side. Well, we decided that a plug and play was really a much better way to go because that same box can provide grid stabilizing energy services for the utility but it also provides um, peak shaving, energy efficiency, and energy security to the building that it's connected to. So its uh, resiliency is, uh, you know, kind of goes a, a round mm -hmm. circle. Mm -hmm. it, it helps the, the grid because it's providing energy resiliency at the fringes of the grid on the customer side of the meter. But if anything is going on with the grid that um, caused it to brown out or black out, it's right there supporting the customer. In fact, it's so fast if it does separate and, and operates as a UPS, the customer doesn't even know they're off the grid. And, and I think that's what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times folks ask me about being off the grid and do you have big interruptions and how do you smooth it out? And a lot of times the battery is like the intermediary and makes mm -hmm. helps smooth things it out. It does, yeah. And like, so hydrogen wouldn't react as fast as a battery and super, super capacitors react even faster than the battery. So if you put the right mix together mm -hmm. and have the right controls, mm -hmm. you can actually make it pretty seamless. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about your system though, it almost sounds like it's for a certain scale. Is there like a scale limit to your system? Or could you go to the mega gig gigawatt scale and go really big? Or you, is there kind of a sweet spot for sure. your, your technology? Um, we actually have standard product sizes at uh, 30 kilowatts, 75 kilowatts, 125 and 250. But I'll use Camp Smith as an example. We paired two of our 250 kilowatt boxes to provide a half a megawatt. And then with that, we're linked into four diesel generators that are providing another three megawatts. So because we can, I'll call this, uh, get a little geeky here, operate in parallel, we can add systems together and go to the megawatt size. Okay. So would your system, would HECO be able to look at a system like yours as a solution on a grand scale, on a, on a utility scale? Um, or would that be a stretch for a system yeah. like yours? Um, I'll, I'll caveat that we, we aggregate our facilities together so we can look like we're a large megawatt. Okay. But what we've done is we've taken uh, individual systems at many different facilities through a portal that looks like it's all one tied together system, even though electrically it, it's not. They're all in different dis distribution cir circuits. But we don't aspire to be like a grid scale, grid side of the meter solution. We're really very focused on commercial and industrial military customers on the customer side okay. of the meter to provide them energy resiliency and uh, energy security, energy efficiency. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where I was going. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, HECO has a huge challenge. I mean, they're trying to pull industrial scale, you know, power customers with residential mm -hmm. scale and hospitals with, you know, 
businesses and they all have different needs and they're doing all of it they're doing soup to nuts mm -hmm. but there's probably some value to breaking up the grid into areas that could take systems that incorporate your scale and could actually give our whole community a lot more redundancy and security mm -hmm. because in a disaster or something when HECO goes down on this island, it's a day, at least a day, usually a couple of days before they can get the whole island back up mm -hmm. because of how they have to bring their system back up. But if you have pockets of islanded um, systems that, that can manage themselves, those things could pop up all by themselves and HECO could reconnect in a few hours because mm -hmm. once everybody's on the same frequency and, and it's talking together at the right frequency, boom, they can connect and they're back on the grid. Mm -hmm. So it seems like if, if we looked at it in a more strategic level, and said we, we could probably take this grid and redesign it so that this community has a couple of these microgrids set up. And then in the, in the industrial areas and stuff where a grid has to be kind of robust, HECO Focus is there, but they also help design the other things out and they all work mm -hmm. together. Is mm -hmm. that a reasonable? Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's one of, our, uh, one of our key attributes is that when our system uh, is integrated as the microgrid controller and there is a grid outage, we keep the renewables online. They don't go offline. One of the one of the unpleasant discoveries uh, in the wake of any uh, uh, natural disaster, when the utility goes away, people think, well, thank God we have our, our renewables here. When the sun comes up tomorrow morning, we'll be able to have electricity, and it's not the case. But with our system, that is the case. Our energy storage would provide that ride through, and we still commutate those renewable uh, assets so that they stay online. And it has been our focus and our target to uh, uh, get our systems uh, integrated into the community where it can do the most benefit. Now, obviously, that would be police and fire and hospital, you know, the first responders in the event of, a, of, a, of an emergency outage. But at the same time, people have to eat. People have to fuel their vehicles or things like that. So we've also looked at that. And in fact, Lisa and the team actually were one of the winners in the RISE NYC program, which was a program that was put together in the wake of Superstorm Sandy and actually won a, a major contract to do four uh, uh, completely resilient energy uh, programs there in lower Manhattan. Awesome. Any other kudos you've gotten? I know, and I, I got to apologize to everybody. We mm -hmm. actually had some photos we were going to try and throw up, and one of them was President Obama with um, sure. the folks from Go Electric in the background. So we're, we try and give people a chance to show that stuff. We, we didn't get the photos in in time, but um, maybe we can throw them up on your next visit. But uh, what are some of the other things you've been yeah, we, we, we've had a really fun um, startup story. Um, last year, President Obama had his uh, had a first ever Innovation Day at the White House, and we were actually personally reached out to by his staff to participate in that. So, so I got to fly in, set up a little uh, table right in the White House, got to walk around all the different rooms, you know, and then kind of take a, a tour by myself. So. And then uh, after uh, quite a few VIPs came through to talk with everyone, he, he uh, stopped by and uh, gathered everybody in, in one of the press rooms and talked about the importance of small business and innovation uh, uh, to help grow America. So that, that was really fun. But we've also had, um, we've been very um, uh, successful in uh, presenting to uh, uh, awesome organizations that help the startup world, like uh, the NREL Forum, uh, South by Southwest Echo. Uh, in Indianapolis, they have the Innovation <coughs> Showcase. So it's, it's been a lot of fun uh, leaving the corporate world and doing the startup world and, and having the opportunity to get that kind of exposure. Yeah, and it is a great time right now. It really, really is. I, I'm fortunate. I'm kind of like you. I, mm -hmm. I started at HCAT uh, about three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started part-time even, because I was still in the National Guard doing a lot of stuff. And um, it's just been fun to watch how the energy uh, stakeholders and the energy industry uh, are starting to really get an identity. Uh, one of the, the revelations I've had is that we no longer have a transportation energy and a grid energy issue. We have, they're together. Mm -hmm. As the, the more right. plug-in vehicles we have, then you, you not only have more demand on your grid, but you also have storage on your grid. And mm -hmm. you have, I mean, things start to connect that were never connected mm -hmm. before. And they'll start to present challenges and opportunities that we've never had before with the, with the power companies and such. Mm -hmm. And I know that like the, the um, Air Force Research Lab that we're, we work with, they've taken an Air Force station and put in so many plug-in vehicles that they're using those plug-in vehicles for storage on their 
the little base grid mm -hmm. and trying to see how that works and they're having some challenges probably because mm -hmm. you guys aren't running their controls <laughs> but but you know they're they're finding out how it yeah. works and they're seeing where the bumps in the road yeah. are but it also does present some great opportunities yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, this is an exciting time yeah i think one of the most uh, uh exciting probably the most rewarding thing about working with goal electric is the fact that uh, parts of the technologies that we use today, that we leverage today, go all the way back to when uh, the, the really intelligent people in our company were helping, and I was working there as well, uh, when we were doing electric and hybrid vehicle development for General Motors. And this goes all the way back to the turn of the century, so 1999 to 2000, but that same technology is now actually being leveraged to where it can really do some, uh, do some good for the environment, and that's particularly satisfying to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, what's coming up for Go Electric? What are some of the exciting things you're looking to in the future? Sure. Well, we've got we've won a few contracts this year, so uh, well, we've had a pretty good year. Um, uh, there's a microgrid project at uh, Tuelli uh, Army Depot in Utah. We're going to be participating on that next year. Uh, Darren mentioned the Rise NYC project. Um, we uh, won one of those awards. We have four small businesses that provide services to um, the uh, New York Metro. We'll be installing and demonstrating our, our systems there, keeping those businesses very resilient, energy resilient, which in turn, uh, you know, if the grid goes out, they can help support their community trying to stay resilient by either providing um, gas or food or uh, um, pharmacy things. So, uh, and we are um, uh, working on uh, our next generation of product, which is going through UL certification. We're going to finish that up in about a month. Uh, that will uh, incorporate what they call open ADR uh, utility software, which allows our system to talk with utilities for demand response program. So we're really, really fired about, about okay. that because now our box, our system, um, uh, when installed in a utility demand response program can help, like I said, the grid and the customer stay energy resilient. But those are income earning type programs for the equipment. So now we have a battery energy storage, which is also UPS, that gets a paycheck every month. I don't think that's ever happened before in the UPS well, world. We got we to show share this with President Trump, uh, President elect Trump. This is one of your jobs programs, sir. <laughs> you go electric's like creating jobs for everybody. So. Uh, we're up against our time, and I'd like to thank you so much for being here and sharing some time with us and bringing us up to date on what Go Electric's doing and what you can help us uh, get forward in Hawaii. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you,